Straight Shift. With the Car Chick, the podcast that's all about cars, buying, selling, fixing, and driving. And sometimes pretty fast if you're the Car Chick. Now, here's he is. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to The Straight Shift. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. We're going to do a podcast today in honor of Father's Day. So my dad, you know, Father's Day is a little bittersweet for me because I lost my dad unexpectedly back in 2009. And he and I were two peas in a pod. I was the classic daddy's girl. He's the one who got me into cars and driving and, you know, all sorts of other bad and expensive <laughs> habits. But I always remembered that in our basement when I was growing up, we had this great sign that my mother had gotten him years ago that said, the difference between men and boys is the price of their toys. That was hanging next to the pool table, the air hockey table, the slot car track, and the model train track. So dad had a few toys in the basement and He also had sports cars, not super fancy, really expensive sports cars. He was a big fan of the Mazda RX-7s when those came out and taught me all about manual transmissions and rotary engines. But it's just true. Boys, no matter what their age, they like their toys. So today we are going to talk about what toys, what cool cars and trucks would be great for dad if he is in the market this Father's Day. Different men have different preferences when it comes to motorized toys. Some like big honking trucks, some like Jeeps that they can take off road or look like they could go off road if they really wanted to. My brother, the guy that I call my brother, he's actually my mom's neighbor, but we're family by choice. He and his other cop buddies like to go rock crawling. So they've all got Jeeps and off-road vehicles. That's what they do to relieve stress. But some guys prefer muscle cars or sports cars cars with, you know, more horsepower than they know what to do with. Some prefer big luxury sedans that are pimped out with all the latest technology and creature comforts. For some, it might be a big roomy SUV that can hold a ton of crap and tow a boat and take the family to the lake or to the mountains for the weekend. Doesn't matter. There's a ton of different choices for toys. So today we're going to talk about my top choices for vehicles for the big boys who like their toys. And, you know, some girls, we like our toys too. But today is in honor of the guys. So number one, and this is the obvious choice, the Jeep Wrangler. If your dad is like my brother and likes to go rock crawling or off-roading, there's honestly nothing better at that job than a Jeep Wrangler. It's one of the only things it does well, mind you, but people who go rock crawling and do a lot of off-roading usually aren't all that concerned with reliability anyway because they're probably going to break stuff as it is and Technically, a lot of that stuff will void your warranty anyway. So, you know, who cares? That's why Jeeps get so beat up. But it's, you know, one of the funny things about the Jeep Wrangler is it's the only vehicle on the market, at least in the U.S., that I can think of where air conditioning is still optional. Everybody takes the doors off the Jeeps anyway, so why do you need air conditioning if you're going to take the doors off? But there are literally 21, I think, different versions of the Jeep Wrangler right now, so it can get a little confusing. But the Rubicon model is the one that is best for rock crawling and any type of serious off-roading that you're going to be doing because it gives you these special off-road tires that are going to give you the traction on the rocks and move all the gravel and the dirt out of your way. It's got the heavy-duty axles with shorter gearing, and the new ones have an electronic front and rear locking differentials and electronically disconnecting front stabilizer bar and rock rails. If you don't know what rock rails are, they're kind of like running boards, but instead of just allowing you to be able to step up and get into the car easily, it also is designed to deflect debris and kind of bounce the Jeep off the rocks when you're crawling and you end up tipping it half sideways. So those little guards A, help, you know, the Jeep not to fall over at all, but it gives it, it kind of braces it against the rock so the side of your car doesn't get all scraped up. The Rubicon comes in both the two-door and the four-door version, but typically a shorter wheelbase can be better if you're doing some serious rock crawling, but the four-door and limited model is pretty cool. I like that one. There's even a hybrid version, so you can feel like you're saving the earth that you're crawling over. 
But if you prefer to have a little reliability with your off-road adventures, you cannot beat the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. Back in 2019, listen to me, back in 2019, you know, it's a whole year ago, but with everything that's been going on in 2020, it just, it feels like so long ago since the world was normal. But in 2019, Toyota gave the TRD Pro line some really cool stuff. It gave them Fox Racing Shocks, which are just absolutely amazing. So you can drive over stuff at speed and it will absorb it. It makes the TRD Pro just absolutely incredible at handling a variety of different type of off-road adventures, not just rock crawling. You can even get a sweet A-pillar mounted snorkel so you can go over the woods and through the river instead of the other way around. But I absolutely love the Tacoma. It's one of my favorite trucks. It doesn't necessarily have all the latest and greatest technology, but you know it's a Toyota, so it's one of the more reliable trucks out there. Now, if you want to save a little money and be a little kind of retro cool, you can find a used Toyota FJ Cruiser. Again, like most Toyotas on the planet, it's very reliable if cared for properly and relatively cheap to maintain. So that is what I got for my brother when his Jeep started costing him an arm and a leg to keep running because it was a Jeep. And I also got one for one of my good clients and my oldest best friend. We've known each other since we were, I think, six or seven years old. He lives out in California and he's just kind of your typical surfer guy. And so he wanted something that he could throw the paddle boards and the surfboards. I think he even has a glider. He can throw everything on the top of that and put his wife and his two little girls in the back. And well, they're not little anymore. Gosh, they've grown up so much. But Ryan's still a big kid. So he likes to do his California beach adventures. And the FJ Cruiser was just so perfect for him. So that's his dad car. You might be more of a truck man. So if dad doesn't necessarily go off roading for fun, but he still wants a truck, maybe he needs it for work. Maybe he needs it to tow a trailer or make those weekend trips to Lowe's or Home Depot, or maybe for no good reason at all, except that sometimes a man just wants a truck. And if dad just wants a truck, not necessarily for a specific reason that he needs maximum hauling or towing capability, but just wants a good all around cool truck, the best one is the Ram 1500. Yeah, the Ford F-150 can tow more and the Silverado has this cool feature where it has 15 different cameras that magically make your trailer behind you disappear so that you can see behind you. It's like magic. But if you don't need all all of those things. You just want a nice, all-around, cool, comfortable truck. The Ram 1500 has, I think, the best blend of all of the things that a truck should be able to do. And styling-wise, it's just so pretty. It's a gorgeous truck. The interior of it can get literally as luxurious as a Mercedes. And the technology looks like it was taken from a combination of Audi and Tesla. And it's also really user-friendly. You can practically use it as an office. And a lot of people do use their truck as an office. The center console is very configurable. So you've got pockets and chargers for all your devices and sliding bins for little things like pens and other junk or big things. There's literally room in the center console to swallow a laptop and a small briefcase bag. And then the console lid you can shut that and it can even function as a desk. So literally you could live in this truck. And fortunately, there's also plenty of cup holders for your coffee in the morning. But I also love that the ride is very smooth on the Ram for, you know, smooth for a truck. And if dad pisses off mom, quite frankly, he can just live in there for a few days until she forgives him because everything you need is in that truck except a bathroom. It's just awesome. All right, I'm going to take a really quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some sedans and some SUVs and even some sports cars that would be great for dads who love their toys. Be right back after this. Do you hate car shopping? Do you worry about being taken advantage of or about finding the right car at a great price? Buying a car can be a frustrating and time-consuming experience. But what if you could get a great deal without having to do a ton of research, without having to haggle, and without the fear of buying a lemon? 
you can. As your personal car shopper, the Car Chick will help you pick the perfect car based on your unique lifestyle, budget, and personality. She'll handle all of the legwork and negotiating for you. All you have to do is sign the papers and take the keys. It's that easy. To learn how the Car Chick can save you time, money, and hassle on your next car purchase, give us a call at 704-248-8706. That's 704-248-8706. Or visit us on the web at thecarchick.com. Automatic? Automatic? We don't need no stinking automatic. Straight Shift with the Car Chick. Welcome back to the Straight Shift. Today we are talking about boys and their toys in honor of Father's Day and what I think are some of the best toys automotive toys, that is, for dad. We talked about some cool trucks, because sometimes a guy just needs a truck. But you know, I really wish I had a truck right now. We have been, we spent the weekend clearing out our garage, which it's something that I've been needing to do for years. But it's, since it looked like something out of an episode of Hoarders, you just look at something like that and think, where do I even start? It's so overwhelming that you just keep putting it off. Well, I couldn't put it off anymore because we found termites in a tree in our backyard and a little evidence of a termite tube in just one corner of the garage. So now, of course, the termite people have to come out and treat our whole property, which is not cheap, but they had to, they asked us to move everything away from the walls of the garage so that they could go. Apparently they have to drill into the corners, of the concrete right at the edge of the interior of the garage and stick these rods down in there with the chemicals that kill the termites or whatnot. And the process of getting all of that crap just two feet away from the walls it's like if you're gonna do that you've got to start at least going through the crap and it was just amazing what we found in there but i'm making all these runs to the dump into the charity donation places in my mini so of course that's going to take 10 times as long if i just had a truck so i'm I'm lamenting not having a truck right now (laughs) but sometimes a guy doesn't want a truck. Sometimes a toy for a guy can just be the nice sedan that he drives to work every day. And here's a couple that I really like that can double as toys. And they might not be something that you think of when you start looking for a mid-size or large-ish sedan so that dad can be comfortable. But I really like the Nissan Maxima, it's been around for nearly 40 years now. And it started out as a compact econo box, but now it's Nissan's flagship sports sedan. And it really does drive a lot like a sports car, but it has four doors. So you can still get the kids in the back with car seats and all the other crap that comes with the family because it has a nice giganimous trunk. But it's the kind of car that can give dad the best of both worlds so that he doesn't have to sacrifice the fun of driving for having a family. And the Maxima is not for everyone. The styling of Nissans in general is not for everyone. The Maxima has some very space age, weird, angular lines. And you either love it or you hate it. I like funky. So I actually really like the Maxima. And it's just a lot of fun to drive for something that is a basically a large sedan. So that's one to think about for dad if he wants to you know, also not spend a bazillion dollars. But if you want a little more luxury in your life, because some dads need their creature comforts, the Genesis G90 is an amazing vehicle and it gives you so much luxury for your buck. It really delivers on the luxury sedan in spades. The 2020 model received a makeover, so the front end and the rear end both have a little bit of a different look, and they're implementing this new oversized grille for Genesis that, to me, looks a little like the Superman symbol, just without the S, which Dad might like. He might feel like Superman in this car. And it makes the G90 look both aggressive and classy at the same time. 
It's not like that giant buck tooth guillotine looking grill they tried to put on the Acura's years ago, or even some of the, the bigger grills that like the Lincoln has. This one's, I think, a good balance. And it just, it cracks me up because I, I look at it and I see the Superman symbol, but that's appropriate for dads. Dads can be Superman. But Genesis also upped their game on the interior with this car. The They've always had cars that their goal was to rival BMW and Mercedes, but they still fell short. I think with the quality of the interior, if you really touch it and feel it, you're just like, okay, this isn't quite on the level of BMW or Mercedes or Lexus, but uh, it kind of is now. They really up their game and it just feels so much more luxurious inside. But for ten to twenty thousand dollars less than you would pay for, like a Mercedes S Class or a Seven Series BMW or even the Lexus LS, the Genesis G90 is just such a great car for the dad that wants to look like a million bucks, but without actually spending all that money. Now, sometimes a dad needs a big honking SUV that he can just throw a whole bunch of crap in and tow the boat, maybe tow a horse trailer, or in my world, a race car. And the biggest honking SUV out there is the Chevy Suburban. It dwarfs everything else on the market. It measures 224.4 inches long. That's just crazy. That's what, like nearly 19 feet? I mean, it's ginormous, which means you can't park it anywhere. But it's not a toy in and of itself. I consider it more of a toy support vehicle because it can tow all the toys. But Dad can also get one in black and sport some aviator sunglasses and pretend he's a G-man while he's at it. But sometimes you need that toy support vehicle. But if he doesn't need a truly big honking SUV and would rather have something a little bit different... A sport utility coupe might be more up his alley. BMW created this bizarre category with the X6 many years ago. And for all of its issues, it's still, in my opinion, the coolest sport utility coupe that you can buy. It's... It's not remotely practical because there is nothing that it does really well except look cool and go fast. That fastback style, really super slopey roofline, it kills your rear visibility. It means that you can't put adults comfortably in the back seat unless they're really short people. But it's cool looking and it has been redesigned for 2020 and it's even faster. And the M version is stupid fast. I have one of these on order for one of my really cool dad clients right now. And unfortunately, production has been delayed and delayed and delayed. We ordered the car back in January, but then COVID hit and production went to hell in a handbasket. And so it's supposed to start production now on June 22nd. Fingers crossed that that's actually going to happen. It's been delayed three times already, but I have hope because this dad really wants this toy. The M version has a massive turbocharged V8 that puts out over 600 horsepower. Can you imagine 600 horsepower in an SUV? That's just insane. But you can still fit the two car seats in the back because he's a single dad. He's got two kids. They love riding in the back of that thing. They fit just fine. You know, you just have to be the kind of dad that can stomach the six-figure price tag on one of these things. But very cool, very fast. And if you want something that feels more like a sports car but sits up a little higher, the BMW X6 can be a great choice. Now, for some boys, I'm sorry, I mean dads, <laughs> their favorite toy is a pure sports car. This was my dad. This is where I get it from. When he turned 40 back in the late 70s, dad bought the first generation Mazda RX-7. Up until then, we were a one-car family, and we had this big, hideous station wagon that looked a lot like the family truckster. It was that awful olive green with the wood grain sides. <laughs> It was so ugly. But he decided he was turning. No, this is when he turned 30. He turned, nope, this is when he turned 40. I can't even remember back that far because I was little. But he got a first-generation Mazda RX-7. And it was the first time I had seen a manual transmission. And so this is when Dad started teaching me about that stuff. I was seven years old, and we would sit. I would sit in the passenger seat and... 
And he would explain to me how the transmission worked and how the gearing worked and how the clutch worked and how you had to, you know, push the clutch in and then shift and then let the clutch gently out as you ease onto the gas. And that really started my understanding of how cars work. And with that driving dynamics, dad's the one who taught me that driving a stick shift is driving. Anything else is just aiming. And most people don't even do that well. So he always told me, be a driver, not an aimer. And he would let me shift from the passenger seat. So I got really good at shifting with my left hand. And sometimes he would let me sit in the driveway and it was so funny. I had to scoot like all the way down the seat to be able to push the clutch to the floor and then move the gear shift through the gears while the clutch was in, while the car wasn't running, just to feel like I was driving the sports car. But I could either push the clutch in or I could see over the steering wheel, but not both at the same time. But the car wasn't moving, so it was perfectly safe. But I just have so many fond memories of that car. And that was what I call his first midlife crisis car. And it got both of us really into sports cars. It was a nasty downhill slide for me after that. But I learned the word torque. That's always been one of my favorite words. So that's when that entered my vocabulary. (laughs) But for some men, when they think of a sports car, they really think muscle car, right? If your dad loved the classic muscle cars, maybe his dad had one when he was a kid or when he was younger. Or if you're more my age, maybe your dad had a classic car himself. That was his first car. And one of the coolest classic muscle cars in my opinion there's a lot to choose from and since i've been doing rust rescue and working on the classic cars i've i've gained a a broader appreciation for all the different types of muscle cars that were popular in the 60s and 70s but i'm still always partial to the fast back mustangs and so if your dad fancies himself steve mcqueen racing on the streets of san francisco in that green fast back bullet mustang Man, two years ago in celebration of the 50th anniversary of that iconic movie, Bullet, Ford reintroduced the Mustang Bullet, complete with that just gorgeous fastback styling, nearly 500 horsepower. They even brought back that special edition dark highland green paint that was unique to a Bullet. And you know if you find a classic car, we actually found one. Well, we didn't find one, but one of our customers for Rust Rescue now my buddy and my partner Vince and Taz's custom hot rods guy had bought this fastback Mustang and he just thought it was a fastback Mustang and wanted us to do some stuff to it. And when we started taking it apart to do the body work and get it ready for paint, the car had been painted over in this really kind of like Barney purple color. But we looked and inside the door wells and when we removed the window seals, because Cheap paint jobs, they don't remove the window seals or anything like that. Vince does everything. So we moved the window seals. We saw this dark green paint, and we kind of looked at each other like, no, no way. And so we ran the VIN plate on this car, and it is an original bullet Mustang. This guy didn't even know what he had. The car, even in the condition that it was in, was worth tens of thousands of dollars. The original bullet Mustangs, if you can find one, because they were very limited edition, they are worth a fortune. So we were so excited that we found a, a true bullet Mustang. But it was because we recognized that dark Highland green paint. So... You can even get there's a special edition one now with the new ones that has the it had a white cue ball shift knob in the movie and they've gone back to that too. So it's just there's so much cool stuff that you can get. And I, I love the look of that bullet Mustang. It's so, so gorgeous. But some dads are more Mopar guys, and he might prefer the Dodge Challenger. Man, especially that SRT Hellcat. That thing makes an obscene 797 horsepower. Granted, it doesn't handle for crap, but man, few things are going to put a smile on a guy's face like the sound of the 6.2 liter supercharged V8. Holy cow. There's just, there's no place you can lay down that kind of horsepower, even on the track, unless you're a pro driver. You're All you're going to do with that is, is kill yourself, but sometimes you just got to have a lot of horsepower. If dad is more of an import guy and nostalgic for the hot hatchbacks of his youth, you might actually consider a Volkswagen Golf GTI. 
it's really great for dads of all ages. You know, we associate the import hatchbacks with the younger generation, you know, guys more in their 20s, maybe early 30s. But I've had a couple of dads want to get back to that hot hatchback. The kids are older now. They don't need to get a bunch of you know car seats in a vehicle, although you can still get you know at least one car seat into a GTI because as a hatchback, it's fairly practical. And not all guys can rock the more cute styling of the minis like Maggie, but if you want a hot hatchback, that GTI is a boatload of fun to drive. It comes with some of the issues, you know, that are associated with a Volkswagen. But again, you're not buying German cars for their being cheap and easy to maintain. But you can park it practically everywhere and have a really good time zipping around town in it. But of course, the ultimate sports car for guys, for dads, the ultimate midlife crisis car is always the Corvette. It is the best horsepower to dollar ratio on the market. And for 2020, the Corvette has undergone the most radical redesign in its entire 67-year history, in my opinion. It's unbelievable. I was never a huge Corvette fan. I appreciated them, but the styling, once the old Stingrays went away and when you got into the 80s and 90s, everything just kind of became very, they just looked heavy and bulky and they were heavy and bulky, but now they're moving towards more of the true sleek European supercar look. Don't worry, you still get nearly 500 horsepower out of that 6.2 liter V8, but now there's a mid-engine layout If you know me, you know I love mid-engine cars for their insane handling and the weight distribution. My Porsche that I had years ago that I raced was mid-engine. You can throw them into a corner and drive them sideways all day long, and they don't really complain about it too much. I tell you, I love, love, love the styling on this new 2020 Stingray. It it looks like a European supercar. It looks like something that McLaren would build, not an American muscle car. And my only beef with it, and I have this beef about a lot of cars now, is that there is no manual transmission option. But most of the supercars are going away from that in favor of a dual clutch flappy paddle situation. Because they do say it is technically faster around the racetrack with that setup. To me, it just it's not the same driving experience. It disconnects you a little bit from the car. But when you're in a car like that, with that much power and that much handling capability, you're really just worried about keeping it on the track. So, you know, if you don't have to stick the third pedal in and shift on your own, just do the flappy paddles and let the transmission work for you. You might be better off, but... It's just gorgeous. You guys need to Google that. And I'll put some pictures of it on my Facebook and my uh, Instagram. But the only complaint that the industry has is they say that the rear visibility is poor. Really? Who cares? Anybody behind you is going to be so far behind you within two seconds. It's not going to matter. Anything in your rearview mirror is losing. So that I that's just is silly to me. But their other complaint is that the cabin is designed all around the driver. And so they say that the passenger might feel a little isolated in the car. Okay, let's just think about that. This is a sports car with a ton of power and a ton of handling. It is all about the driver. And if you can even find a passenger that's brave enough to ride with you in this thing, they shouldn't be touching any of those controls anyway. We have a sticker on the passenger side dashboard in the race car for when we do put the passenger seat in the car because we're doing test and tuning or working with, you know, our, our coach and co-captain, or, you know, if we have the opportunity to do a, have somebody do a ride along with us, if they let us do that. But there is a sticker on the dashboard on the passenger side of the race car that says, don't touch anything. The passenger needs to just sit there, buckle up, shut up and enjoy the ride. Keep your hands off of everything. So those two complaints about the new Corvette, if that's really all they have to complain about, this car is damn near perfect. I just recommend that you also get dad some track days so that he can learn to drive that monster and have fun with his car without getting put in jail. 
So I hope you have enjoyed my picks for the best toys for dad. What kind of toys does your dad like? Or if you are a dad, what kind of toys do you like to have? Drop me a comment or send me an email through the contact form on my website, thecarchick.com. Or if you want a new toy, give me a call. We'll talk about that. I love buying toys. But please drive your toys safely and legally. That's what racetracks and off-road courses are for. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Stay safe. I'm out of here. The Straight Shift Podcast is copyright Lee Ann Shattuck, The Car Chick, 2017. All views expressed by guest and or co-hosts are those of the guest and or co-hosts, and not necessarily those of Lee Ann Shattuck or The Car Chick. Mm-hmm.